Oh, my hearties! A very, very good morning to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, this Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock sharp, and we are streaming live, live streaming on Facebook Live. That's the big one. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've just joined us, lovely to have you with us, of course, and you must make sure that you tell everybody about this wonderful live stream. So tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Send the word round, dinky-doo, it's Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, the first lot of the internet, and, of course, the world's most humble man, saying a very good morning to you. There's Jack saying dinky-doo, Scotty, Scott Mackay's with us, Kevin Stewart's watching. Excellent stuff. Uh, Kevin Stewart, dinky-doo, good morning, Scotty McClure. Good morning to you. What a fabulous live stream we have in store for you this morning. So let's get the chat going. Let's get the sharing going. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Ah, ha-ha, I'm a meaty boy. Paul Francis Carroll, I have the mighty organ at the ready. Dinky Do, Eleanor McKinnon, Ned McMillan. What you might want to do is uh, Skype me, Paul, and uh, give us a wee chat. We can have a good old matey boy chat about the wonders of the pipe organ. So we'll set up the Skype at some point. Ned McMillan, good morning, good morning, Ned. Morning, Scotty McClue, says Kareem Zachariah. Karim, I admire your staying power. Your loyalty and your support is very, very much appreciated because we all depend on each other in times of trouble. Ian Kerr's watching. Good morning, Scotty. This is Christine Garvin. Last night's stream on YouTube was a better one. Do you mean a better one than we normally do or better than here or whatever? Great day for it, Scotty. Dinky do, says Hector Brown. Hector Brown, lovely to have you with us. I'm just going to share from the off guys so that everyone knows because people forget. They go, oh, my clue was on. And you need to put your televisions off, of course, because this is where it's happening. Mark Billington's watching. Dinky do, Scotty, says the wonderful Nikki Graham. Good morning, says Thelma Eakins. Thelma Eakins, have I said it right? Hi, hi, good morning, Dinky Doo, Derek Walker. Louise Kerr, Dinky Doo, good morning to you. Were you trying to slide on there, Derek? Were you trying to sneak in? And hi, hi, good morning. Hi, hi, don't, don't be saying all that sort of stuff. Louise Kerr, lovely to have you with us. And uh, a good morning to you, I say. Thumbs up. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm just going to share from the off guys so that everybody knows we're on. And then um, what we can do then is ensure, because you can have the finest show in the world. I would venture to say this is, but everybody needs to know about it. We normally do on YouTube because the idiots didn't come on as far as I know. I see what you mean, Jack, yes. Good morning, Scotty, says Eleanor McKinnon. Good morning, Eleanor. Uh, dinky do, good guy, says Brian Hall, the wonderful Brian Hall. Dinky do to you, there we are. So let's get the sharing going as quickly as possible. I shall click share and send it to the big Scotty McClue page of which we have, is it 5,000, nearly 6,000 of you on that one. Good morning, Scotty. Dinky do. So the wonderful Brian Murphy. Wonderful Dave Anderson's watching. What a top man. My television's staying on. It's not going off. Nicky Graham, why would you not put off your telly when Scotty McClue's on? Can you multitask? Can you watch two things at the one time? What's your thoughts on the new Labour leader? I'll tell you, Kareem. Well, he's, he's uh, you know, a good guy. He just seems to be a good guy. I liked the old Labour leader. I'm not particularly... Uh, far to the left, but, um, you know, I liked the man who's a thoroughly decent human being. I don't know why they had to change their Labour leadership, because the truth is he was the most popular leader ever, but he was so powerful they didn't want him in. I mean, he nearly won the last election, you know. Uh, Labour in Scotland, of course, have just stayed in the wilderness. So there we are. Um, the wonderful Jill's watching. Thank you, do, Jill. A very good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Scotty McClure, says John Jones. Good morning, John Jones. Lovely to have you with us. You see, what's very interesting, a former Prime Minister and a former Chancellor made a speech at the time of independence, and it was just the wrong speech. And that more or less killed the Labour movement in Scotland. Now, it's very strange because 
Scotland, the Labour movement actually has its roots in Scotland and the nationalist movement grew out of the Labour movement. So there you are. The first head of the nationalists was uh, the chairman of the Labour Party. So there you go. Do you think being told to remove a mask in a pharmacy is a disgrace, Scotty? It happened to us last week. They thought it might offend someone. What's your view? How could a mask offend anybody? That I find very, very strange. Let me just share this, guys. Um, I'll just share it to the big Scotty McClue page and we'll let everybody know that we are live streaming right now. And uh, remember, there's nothing on television or radio to touch this show. I can promise you that. That's not blowing any trumpets. That's a fact. There you go. Um, so why would you be asked to remove the mask unless, like motorcycle helmets in shops, say, could you take it off in case you're going to rifle the till or something like that? That's the only thing. What reason did they give for asking you to remove your mask? So there we go. Uh, wonderful. I have to say there was a light-hearted moment with a mask when they came to some television Reporter, did you see that? And she had her mask on. And they asked her a question. She said, oh, you know, so that was quite good. So, Paul Mack, tell me why they asked you to remove your mask. I need to know now. Live now. When I um, come through all this and we're back and I'm making money again, guys, then uh, I'm going to get a faster computer or get somebody in to do all this for me. Live now, and I'll just post it. That's gone. Excellent stuff. If you can all do the same, sharing and sharing and sharing. Derek Walker, did you think the comeback uh, too soon, uh, Boris, as 10 days is well short? Do you think he come, came back too soon? Haven't quite got that one, Derek. You'll need to go again on that one. Mike McCabe's watching. Good morning, Mike. Nikki Graham. Scotty, did you get your letter from Boris? Not a thing has popped onto my mat, but the poor soul's no wheel at the moment, so I don't know that writing letters is the top of his list. And if he's to sign them all personally... That's going to take a bit of time as well. So let Boris use all his strength to making a full recovery. The wonderful Susan Forrest is watching. Good morning. Gordon Robertson. My goodness. Up already. Good morning, Scotty. I'm having a cheese omelette and a big glass of milk for my breakfast. Bit of dairy in there, I think, Gordon. Uh, giving a wee bit to Toya, my adorable hamster. Isn't that wonderful? Toya will shove that right to the back of our pouch. My father had a wonderful garden, and he used to grow these tiny little carrots under a frame. It was so sweet and gorgeous. And um, what he would do with that, we had hamsters, and we used to take a tiny carrot in for the hamsters, so the carrot would be about that length. It was difficult to see, isn't it, on the camera? But the carrot would be maybe an inch and a half. And the hamster would pack this away so there was a little bump right down almost to our back legs. Incredible. So enjoy that cheese omelette. All the best. Keep safe from Springburn. The wonderful Bill Thompson out in Springburn. Jack says, I haven't received my letter from Boris yet. I hope Boris recovers and at last realises that nurses and all healthcare workers and social care workers are not the workforce that austerity should be aimed at. Mike McCabe, not the time for scoring political points, but a very interesting point. So there we are. Angela Ange is watching Dinky Doo Ange. Uh, Angela Ange, Stuart Campbell, Paul Mac. Yes, Scotty, told to remove the mask in the pharmacy. Of all places, couldn't believe it. The reason they gave was it might upset the patients. Well, you're not Dick Turpin, for goodness sake. How upset? They're just going to go, there's, there's a guy wearing a mask. Oh, I'm going to get upset. What, what are we getting, you know? It was also a half face mask, that way or that way. Um, Scotty, so you can still see our face. 
Yes, absolutely. Do you not remember we used to come out the dentist with a scarf right round our faces? George Clark's watching Robert T. Kerr. I wish Corbyn had stayed on as leader, but the last election result was disastrous, so I guess he took it upon himself to leave. Corbyn equals a true socialist. Yes, you've got to admire people who genuinely believe. So there you are. Wonderful stuff. And, uh, you know, I mean, Scotland is stuffed with true socialists. That's not political. That's just the way we are. We don't buy into the class system. And I have this argument with idiots. I've had it on Twitter. If you've got a Twitter account, follow me at Scotty McClue. And don't stop following because there's huge stuff on there. I was praising the Queen's speech, which was wonderful. And I was praising the Queen. And of course, the idiots start to attack not having a clue what they're talking about. The chip on their shoulder is bigger than their brains. Very strange. Morning, Scotty. Hope you and the family are well. Lovely to hear your cheery voice, George Clark. Lovely to have you with us. Dinky do. We're as well as can be expected, but I'm getting wonderful feedback about this show. Everybody is saying we must join you, Scotty. It keeps the nation, not just the nation, but the world together. Because we've got people watching in America and Canada, Australia, New Zealand, all watching Scotty McClue right now. Guys, can we have a massive share, please? It's a shame he's going to be a dad. I don't know what you mean by that, Christine. I think you mean it's a shame, comma, he's going to be a dad. So there you are. So that's the stuff. Yes, I know what you mean. Boris should get well. Not it's a shame he's being a dad. Hi, Scotty. How do you do? Do you believe about China with the main cause? They knew on the 27th of December last year. What do you think? I'm not going too big on the conspiracy theories just now. <clears throat> Pardon me. Don't worry about my cough, by the way. Had it for 20 years. I'm not going too big on the conspiracy theories because um, there's talk that another nation might have taken it to China. There's talk that it might have been sprayed on us, all that sort of thing. But the one thing I can say is, you know, any kind of biological setup with this, we saw this on Salisbury with the poisoning, uh, stuff like that. It's very, very dangerous. And the problem is they can't necessarily get rid of it once these things start uh, is that bonnet classed as PPE? Yes. Personal protection of my head from people staring at my pit. So there we are. Uh, good morning, Scotty Dinky Doo, Gerald Reedy. Dinky Doo, welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClure, I'd say Loch Lomond is one of the most beautiful locks in Scotland. How lucky we are, Karim Zachariah. We are the luckiest people in the world. We have everything up here. Craig Steele, big hello. Hello, Craig. Nikki Graham. Well, I got my letter, but I think somebody typed the letter for him, really. You don't think he typed it himself? Has he signed it? So there you are. Uh, because my cousin got a letter from Winston Churchill during the war, and um, I spoke to somebody about it, a specialist, and they said, I think this has been auto-signed to be honest with you. So there we are. No, it wasn't Winston. I think it was Clemmy, but it was from 10 Downing Street. Uh, Dan Shaw's watching. James Kiddle's watching. Alan McGee. Welcome, welcome. Morning, Scotty, says the lovely Susan Forrest in Lancashire. Mwah. Good morning, Susan Forrest in Lancashire. Becky Phillips, Nee Letton. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Managed to catch your show finally after months of missing it. Becky, nobody should ever miss Scotty McClure. You miss a second of Scotty McClure, you miss a moment of life. We don't want that. Stephen Mooney, Dinky Doo, Darren Jackson, lovely to have you with us. Hello, Scotty. Not heard you in years. You're a top man. Kevin Moore, you're a top man. It's wonderful. There's a lot of beautiful people out there. Uh, Paul Mac, 165 viewers, you're on fire, Scotty. Well done. Now we need to keep sharing. Can everybody share? Guys, I beg of you. The importance about this is to let everyone know it's on.
You can have the finest show in the world, but if everyone doesn't know it's on, can't join us, blah, blah, blah. Uh, remember to follow me on Twitter, at Scotty McClure, very, very big on TikTok. Um, so get us on, at Scotty McClure on TikTok. We've done a lot of good TikToks about the coronavirus, about staying safe. We were asked yesterday, should Scotty McClure not be taking over from the ex-chief medical officer on the pop-ups, the public information films on television. Uh, so there we are. Scotty, just fine in a job in a big hospital, came out to see ambulance driver talking to a taxi driver through the taxi driver's window. <clears throat> You're thinking of more common sense when he's in the front line. Yeah, but really, yes, absolutely. I can't argue with any of that, John Jones, but we've got to support, uh, he's the front line with patients, we've got to support our ambulance drivers, our ambulance crews, our hospital receptionists, our wonderful care workers that go in and out of houses. And I was hearing yesterday, sometimes they've got 20 patients and they've only got one uh, polythene apron and one set of gloves. I wouldn't like uh, the carers touching my bits and pieces with the gloves that have touched somebody else's bits and pieces, you know. Uh, 150 years, Scotty, very impressive, much more than I receive when I stream. Good for you, Jack. You're obviously a big streamer. Uh, be Trump who wants our NHS and Boris will give it to him. Well, Trump has been saying he's going to put pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical companies at uh, Boris's disposal to make him well. Sandra Free from Greenock, that was uh, on Judge Rinder about my dog. Sandra, lovely to have you with us, dinky do. Steve Wilkie, welcome, welcome, I say. Sandra's watching Donny Richardson, welcome, Gordon Hadley. Willie Neal, William O'Neill, Paul Giuliani. Giuliani, Giuliani. Have I said it right, Paul? Brian Burt's watching, brilliant. Murray O'Donnell, wonderful. Welcome, Murray. Lovely to have you with us. We touch of the Arrow Grey, guys. Can we do some more sharing, please? Share, share, share. Tell 10 to tell 10. Let everyone know what is happening. Share now in public. Share to the story. We'll share to the story. Everybody share right now, please. Fantastic. Lana Hassel, Dinky Doo, Anna Young's calling on you. China should pay, says Christine Garvin. Now, Christine, pay for what? For everything. Tell us more. Very interested in all this way of thinking. Morning, my good fellow, says Murray O'Donnell. Morning to you, good fellow. So there we are. I was talking to a top journalist last night, and he was telling me about, um, I think it was Harrow School, and the um, pupils, students, are known as the fellows. So there you are. They're not, they're not the kids or anything like that. They're the fellows. They're wonderful, isn't it? Paul Bradley, good morning, Scotty. So good to see you and hear you. And at Eton College in Windsor and Berkshire, then uh, if you want to speak to the master, you have to hold on to his gown. If somebody's in a queue behind you and they want to speak to the master, they have to hold on to your gown. So they are. So it's a bit of a conga in the morning at Eton College wanting to speak to the master. Paul Bexfield, well, not in the morning, any time of day. Bonnet PPE, that one tickled me. This is my personal protection. Keep my feet warm. In very difficult times, Peter Collins watching Dinky Doo. I agree, says Jack. Boris, self-isolation, 10 days, well short. Should be 14 days. It'd be healthier if he did, Derek Walker. We don't know, Derek. This is a killer, and it's around everywhere. So there we are. Good morning from Edinburgh, says Liz Sweat. Lovely to have you, Liz. Dinky Doo, Liz Sweet, is it? Shall I say sweet? Very important. Scotty, the EU biologically brought it to Britain because of Brexit. That's another conspiracy theory. No, Robert, it's all over the world. And it came to Britain later. So I think we've got to, you know, I mean, 
I'm not Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, but I think we can we can see that one off. Hi, Scotty. Love your radio show years ago at night. Mary Cummings. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Would you like it to come back? Uh, let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like Scotty McClue back on the radio, either at night or during the mornings. Um, yes, it's got his signature on it, says Nicky Graham. Good. So Boris has signed the letter. Loch Awe is an amazing loch whilst we're on the subject, Scotty. Some great wee cabins to holiday in when this is over near Dalavich. A great place. I know Dalavich. I once went up to now, there was a little school. And I remember taking a show to a little school up Loch Awe side. There was two sides. The other side is, is it... In Connell. Loch Awe is a massive, massive loch. I mean, it goes really from north of Loch Gilpid, uh, virtually up to Oban. So it's it's a fair old size. And they used to say that the loch was as deep as the mountains on the side of it. And of course, Kilchurn Castle, Kilchurn Castle. Stuart Melstrom, good morning, Scotty from Weems Bay. Good morning. Weems Bay will be stunningly gorgeous this morning as it is. The rest of the time, wonderful. Uh, Peter Garvin, come join Scotty, says Christine. It's my birthday today. Can't honestly say, can, can honestly say I've had better. Peter Connolly, it's your birthday. It's massively important. You are massively important. It can't be better than this. I know we're dealing with the lockdown and everything. But that's what we're doing. We're doing everything we can to comply with the instructions and the orders. So there you go. So happy birthday, Scotty, says Sharon Stewart. Think you do. I know my carers I have for my dad have got gloves. Yes, Christine, absolutely. Jason Cunningham's watching. Good morning, Scotty. This is Alan Tonin. Brian Murphy, think you do. Trump will get out. I'm telling you that one. So there you are. Yes, well, I don't think we should have come out of Europe, to be honest with you. But there we are. A lot of people think they come out of Europe. It was xenophobia and all that kind of thing. Sandra, uh, can I say you're a hero? Says Sean Graham. There you go. Sandra, quality chat, quality feedback. Thomas Biden, Aaron Foy, come on, come on, come on. Shared David from Australia. Who are you? So there we are, David Marshall. David from Australia, who are you? Who are you talking to? Um, I am Scotty McClure, the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, and the world's most humble man. Gordon Robertson, do you think all this isolation and social distancing will lead to a decrease in single mothers? Well, Gordon Robertson, unless uh, you know you're absolutely gifted, it's bound to. So there you are, you know. You need to be very gifted to be two meters apart and um, somebody to, uh, you know, get sorted there. Hector Brown, Scotty, a certain country blew up a general country, comes out to protest. There was millions, no retaliation, but a germ bomb, they kill most of the West, just a thought. Ah, so there you are, Hector Brown. Back to the conspiracy, Hector. We shall put it out there in the mix with everything else. Scotty McClure, it's a lovely day outside. I'll be walking the dogs for sure. How's your dog today? Fantastic, Kareem. You know, I told you he had a stroke about 10 years ago, and he hops up on the couch and lifts the little leg away like a little undercarriage. Folds it under him, you know, very, very interesting. Wonderful Richie McCusker's watching. Dinky do la la. Lovely to have you with us. Good morning, Scotty from Edinburgh, says Liz. Good morning, Liz. John Marshall's watching. Morning, Scotty, says Aaron Foy. Yes, get everybody else watching, guys. Uh, well done, Scotty, from Taylor Place and Townhead. Fred McCafferty. Dinky do. We love the tune heat. Uh, fantastic. Eating wildlife, infecting the world, says one eating wildlife. Yes, we don't know if it was an infected bat. I've never actually had a bat. Um, you know, in fact, was it not comedy? Did they not? Was there a comedy sketch years ago with bat 
soup in it. But I don't know that you can eat a bat, a flader moose. You can't eat a fox. I don't know, can you eat a badger? So there we are, do tell. Come on, Scotty, you handsome, witty man, just like my friend, Thomas Pidden. Thomas Pidden, there you are, a compliment for us both. Lovingly known as Sweaty Betty, Liz Sweat. So shall I call you Sweat, Liz? Is that your name? Fabulous name, actually. Um, so there we are. McGinty McGuinness, says Thomas Pidden. I had the oldest hamster in the world, 15. Not really. Every time one died, had to run out and buy another. Looked similar. Didn't want to upset the kids, Kevin Stewart. You are so funny. Absolutely. Do you know, and I'm going to leave this with you all. Do you know, oh, can we have a massive share again, please? Go on, share, share to groups, share to all your gaming friends. Share, 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 share to another page. I'll do that. If you can all do the same, guys, already sharing. Very strange why Trump calls the coronavirus the Chinese virus. Well, he said it's to um, underline that it came from China. Love you, Scotty, says Sharon Stewart. Thank you, Sharon. You are very, very kind. Jacqueline McFarlane's watching Mary Cummings bring Scotty back at night. So you'd like it back at night on the uh, on the radio. That was a massive show. You know, there's never, ever, ever been anything in Scotland to touch that show. Figures-wise, audience-wise, content-wise, never anything very, very strange. And um, I remember saying to somebody, I said, why do the radio companies not want to put this on right now, particularly during lockdown? And um, they said... Perhaps they just don't have a job for you. You know, that's uh, that's just the way of it, you know. But uh, it doesn't matter because on here, I mean, 15,000 people joined us last week on here, live, on this show. So I'm okay with that. That's a good start. Radio stations nowadays would give their eye teeth for uh, 15,000 of an audience. So there you are. So we might be better, guys, just making this the big epicenter for entertainment. Hi, Scotty. Hope you're safe and well. Jacqueline McFarlane, I thank you. Kevin Stewart, it's awesome. Bless you, Kevin. Thomas Peden, shout out to John Marshall, a key worker during these difficult times. He's a plumber and he's an unsung hero. I remember a guy telling me there was two things he'd never seen. One was a dead donkey, and the other was a poor plumber. Uh, Weems Bay, beautiful railway station. Oh, Kevin Stewart, fantastic. I mean, that was right at the center of the aristocracy. Did you not have Lord Inverclyde, um, John Burns, living there at uh, Castle Weems? Uh, you were the center of shipping. The measured mile was just off Skelmerly there for ship's testing. Fantastic. And I can remember talking to the most wonderful man who ran uh, the company that put the engines in the Waverley. And he was telling me that he was out testing with Sir James Lithgow. And they were testing a boat. And the engineer came up and he said to Jim, he said, uh, Sir, I think I can get her to do a bit more. And so James Lithgow said to him, he said, no, no, we've been commissioned to do a vessel that does 18 knots. She's doing that, so we'll leave it at that. I think Sir James, with his wisdom, thought we don't want this thing blowing up on our trials. The wonderful Lithgows, the shipbuilders at Port Glasgow. Um, I had an education expert, Looney Type on the radio calling teachers explainers. I also knew a headmaster who described himself as a head learner on the basis that he, the teachers, and the pupils were all learners. Well, Gordon Robertson, this is correct. This is 100% correct. I mean, I am a lifelong learner. I haven't even scratched the surface. A lovely neighbor said to me the other day, are you finding enough to do, Scotty? I said, 
I need more life. I said, I, I haven't even scratched the surface, you know? I've still got to be, I mean, I'm an actor, I'm a writer, I'm a broadcaster, I'm an educationist, um, you know, I'm a funster, all these sort of things, but I've still to be an accountant, a solicitor, a doctor in music, I've still to be the principal of one of the big colleges or universities. I've still to go into politics. Um, you know, I, I, I worked in banking and finance for years. You know, perhaps I've still to, um, to get a nice job doing that. I've still to lecture uh, abroad. So there we are. I remember somebody saying, uh, Scotty, I think you will pass away as quite an old guy on a plane coming back from China, having delivered a lecture. Isn't that interesting? There you are. One of these soothsayers that can see the future. Hello, Scotty, says the wonderful Kevin Beck. Hello, Kevin. So there you are. So Gordon Robertson, I agree with that head teacher. Uh, Murray O'Donnell, Dinky Do. It's a broad day. Everybody should get out on their doorstep, back garden, or open a window for some fresh air and a bit of sunshine on their faces. Lifts the soul after your pop-up has finished, says Murray O'Donnell. Yes, but I was having a think about this, Murray. Two things. Do we want too much fresh air if the virus is airborne? Just a thought, don't wish to make anybody paranoid. The other thing that uh, I had a thought about, this panic about testing every day. What if just after you've been tested, if you're an essential health worker, uh, you contracted the virus? People then can't say, no, no, there's no way she's got it. She's been tested. You see, you say, well, she must have got it. I don't know if somebody took their mask off or she worked on a patient or you know, that had it, that sort of thing. So it's just, it's just a thought. There we are. Peter Garvin, dinky-doo. Christine, dinky-doo. Peter's here. Good stuff. Uncle Peter, welcome. So there we are. Well done, Christine, for getting Uncle Peter up and watching Scotty McClue live. Wonderful stuff. Agnes Cartledge. Hi, Scotty McClue. Nice to see you. Always nice to hear from you, Agnes. Thank you very much for joining us. And Dinky Do. Heard that the children born nine months from now will be known as children of the Cor Quan, Corona. Not got quite that one, Kevin. Scotty, do you think that COVID-19 is man-made? It's certainly very strange. I mean, we have had outbreaks of things before. In the uh, the Black Death um, that came out in the 1600s, the, well, the 1400s, the 1600s, the Great Fire of London, the plague. They said that it sorted that. People were just dropping like flies and a cart would go around at night and it would be bring out those that have passed away. That sort of stuff. Uh, you know, there were marks put on the door. Uh, then we've had Spanish flu. There was actually an outbreak of bubonic plague in Glasgow. And I'm trying to remember how recently it was, if it might even have been the 60s, but it was kept very quiet and it was clobbered pretty quickly. And they traced it to Catholic weeks, to people, uh, an open coffin of somebody that died of plague. People were going round to the wake and, um, you know, kissing the body and what have you, and uh, it was getting passed around. And of course, even in those days, 1960, you maybe still had a single end, so everybody was piling in to the one house up and down the stairs of the close. So there you go. Um, in answer, Craig Boyd, is it man-made? Well, there's every possibility it's been made in a lab, either accidentally or on purpose, but I would suspect it's man-made because I can't see that it's nature-made. And somebody the other day was going, where is God? And I said, God is all around us. Christ is all around us in his risen power. This is not the work of God. This is the work of the devil. And good 
must always triumph over evil. Otherwise, society breaks down. So there you are. So, uh, a cricket bat, says Hector Brown. No, no, it wasn't a cricket bat. They're made out of willow. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Kevin Stewart. Well, we don't know about that, Kevin. Uh, so there we are. So we'll not actually say that. Even in jest, um, Toast and Bat. Uh, there we go. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that just now. Uh, the wonderful Rod Hardesty is watching. Dinky do, Rod. Lovely to have you with us. Rod was up celebrating early this morning because the bin men were coming and he was quite delighted. And I was saying that with the Olympics being cancelled, with the Edinburgh Festival being cancelled, with the celebrations for 700 years, marking 700 years of the Declaration of Arbroath being cancelled, that was uh, yesterday, wasn't it? Was it today or yesterday? 700 years ago since the Declaration of Arbroath. So there we are. Is it time for a new Declaration of Arbroath? I wonder. Uh, not got you, says Hector Brown. Um, so there we are. Uh, Hector Brown, oh, they've not got there and he mentions spherical things to put you on, mate. Hector Brown, I think you're quite right. I have suffered under wee programmers that go, oh, no, 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 that's too big for us. So they were very strange and you think, uh, you've seen a poor plumber now, says John Marshall. Good, John. Well done, radio stations. Have too much political correctness these days for your 90s humour. Stay on Facebook, YouTube, and stay safe. Well, do you know, the way this show's going, I think this will become the focus for the people of the world during lockdown. Scotty McClue's live stream on Facebook Live popping up. Castle Stewart on the Isle of Butte. Kevin Stewart, absolutely. Do you know, I remember Mount Stewart, the Marquis of Butte, who was a lovely, lovely man, John Butte. This is the father of the present one. The present um, Marquis of Butte was um, the Earl of Dumfries, Johnny Dumfries, the racing driver. And his father was a lovely man, John and his father uh, was very pivotal in the National Trust. He was uh, great for television and radio. And I remember I was working at an ITV station. I won't say which one. And uh, in came the Marquis of Butte. And uh, the uh, lady on reception said to him, he said, uh, can I help you? And he said, yes, I'm here to do the evening program. And she said, oh, can I have your name, please? And he said, John Butte. So she phoned upstairs and said, that's Mr. Butte for you now. <laughs> lovely, lovely stuff. So there we go. Rod Hardestay, I'd hate to see a dead donkey. It would upset me. Oh, very much so. Do you know what the donkeys at Blackpool get for their lunch? There's one for you there, Rod. I'll tell you, half an hour. Uh, may God save you and your beloved ones. I'm sending my regards to Scotland from Palestine. Ahmed Abu Halba. Abu Halba. Abu Halba. Abu Halba. So, Ahmed Abu Halba. God bless you, sir, and God save you. Lovely to have you with us. So there we are. Salam, I say to you. Um, wonderful stuff. Palestine. Scotty McClure has been watched in Jerusalem during Holy Week. I think that's fantastic. Laura Melvin's watching. Thank you, do, Laura. Always lovely to see you. Karim Zakaria. Scotty, it's the 700th anniversary of the Declaration of Arbroath. Fun fact of the day, is it absolutely today, Kareem? Wonderful, because I know that the wonderful Leslie Riddoch is uh, involved. She was talking about a um, film that we could all be watching, and she is uh, a remarkable journalist and a wonderful lady, a lovely person. Hector Brown, a dinky do Joker Smoker Midnight. So I am the Joker. Um, I trust you would have made a great villain in Heartbeat or River City. Thomas Pedden, one of my ambitions was to um, 
get a tiny cameo role in River City and frighten the life out of Lenny. So it would be something like this. I would do this face. Might look a bit strange with the bonnet on, but I'll go, Lenny, a wee word to the wise. You are going to have to be very, very careful. You do not cross me. Have I made myself clear? Would you like a wee dram? Uh, what do you think, guys? Any good? Any good? Ooh, fight myself there. Uh, Scotty, I went to school, which was run on similar lines. Let's get straight to Summerhill. Community education at its finest. Summerhill, what a wonderful school. A.S. Neil, perhaps the greatest educator we've had. I don't know, Kurt Hahn, who founded Gordonston School, was the um, head, the principal of Salem School in Germany. And Hitler put him in prison because he was Jewish and brilliant. And uh, the poor soul was close to a nervous breakdown, I think. And he was staying with a friend in Murrayshire. <clears throat> and uh, he said, Kurt, why don't you bring your school here? And he said, where would I put it? And he said, there's a big estate to let down the road. And they went down to see it, the Gordon Cumming. So William Gordon Cumming had died. And the estate was uh, up for let, and they took it, and the rest is history. That was the founding of Gordonston School in 1934. Wonderful cut hand, wonderful educationist. A.S. Neil, who taught in Gretna, Neil Neil, Orange Peel, Summerhill School, a fantastic educationist. Another great educationist was Robert Owen, who um, founded the New Lanark Mills, and he said, uh, no books before seven, um, dancing and marching and playing. Interesting. So Summerhill, fantastic, Kevin. That's one of the reasons you are a genius. The other one, of course, is you and your uh, parents. I'm a member of the Donkey Sanctuary. I donate each month. It's not expensive. Becky Phillips, Neil Letton, thank you on behalf of these gorgeous creatures. I could communicate. Somebody brought a donkey down to a service once at the church and uh, at Christmas. And um, I was patting the donkey and I looked into his eyes and the recognition. We were communicating big time. Love the animals. Always thought you were a banker, says Chris Marshall. Thank you, Chris. Very kind. Uh, and we get it. Alina Zuber. Hi there, Scotty. First time watching. Alina, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please tell everyone. Happening, my man, says Connor Goodwin. Connor Goodwin, dinky do from Scotty McClue. Can everybody share? I'm getting a bit anxious about the time. We've got about another 15 minutes. Children of Quan Quarantine, similar to Children of the Con. A play on words. Kevin Stewart, if anybody can do a play on words... It's you. So there you are. You are a wordsmith. Give us a shout out. Robert Fleming says, hi, David. Hi, everybody. Is deaf or man made? So there we are, says Alina. No, we can't say that, Alina. I'll have to take that comment down because we can't actually say that. Say hello to a uh, big smash and damn, says Chris Marshall. Uh, doesn't penicillin kill bubonic plague bacteria? I'm sure I read that somewhere. I was thinking about fate. Sir Alexander Fleming came up with the penicillin, great Scotsman. And also Sir John Crofton, who's a distant relative of my own. Uh, Sir John Crofton cured TB. Uh, I remember him being on telly, lovely man, John Crofton, um, a chest physician par excellence, a doctor par excellence. He said, well, we cured 16 million people. Nobody believed us at the time, but we did. And that was bringing in the streptomycin. And the trick that was being missed with, uh, is that light in everybody's road there? Sorry, I moved that. The trick that was being missed with the uh, streptomycin is the length of time to keep it up. And I would say with anything, um, particularly this virus, don't be too much of a hurry to think we've beaten it, right? 
that would be my advice. I am no clinical expert, as you know, but I would say don't be in too much of a hurry with this because these things lurk. Pardon me, for those who doubt the man-made thing, check out Event 201. Uh, far too much of a coincidence, says Paul Mack. Uh, Pat McCarran's asking after you, Scotty. He misses you on the radio. Do you know Elizabeth? I can't believe that. I've been thinking about Pat a lot, and I hope he is well. Please send him my finest and fondest regards. A top man. So there we are. A wonderful human being. Have you ever done a show at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, says Gordon Robertson. Gordon Robertson, I have another project on in the summer that's very, very dear and very important to me. But it clashes with the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. So for the last so many years, I've never been free to do a show at the Fringe. But we should put something together. And uh, I was also thinking about perhaps touring even the village halls and things. Rod Halsey is still waiting for the bin men to arrive. Rod, the excitement must be really mounting. I liked the other one uh, that was saying that they took a flask and sandwiches his wife and sat on the doorstep to watch the bins been taken out. Asking after an old friend, Bill Middleton, contact me, says the wonderful, delightful Margaret Blair. Margaret Blair, you should be on talking to me. Why don't you, um, why don't you actually Skype me? John Amato, hello, Scotty, how are you doing? Hello, John, lovely to hear from you, and Dinky Doo from Scotty McClure. Uh, Becky Phillips, the letter in the Marcus of Butte has a connection to Cardiff, lots of places they are named after him. I'll tell you why that is, Becky Phillips Nilettan. The Marquis of Butte, going way back, um, set up Cardiff's docks. Yes, so he actually built the docks for Cardiff. There we are, and obviously made a lot of money out of it, but all Cardiff docks, it's thanks to the Marquis of Butte. Fantastic stuff. And um, the thing about uh, about the mark that Marcus of Butte, the one that set up the docks, he was way, way, way ahead of his time. He had uh, lovely kids, and he spent a lot of time with his children. Very unusual for a high Victorian aristocratic father. So there we are. So a lot of love in that family. Who gave you your first big break, Scotty? And do you miss the chickeness? of your late show. Well, John Jones, many, many wonderful people have given me a break. Um, I would say a big thank you to the late Bill Brown, William Brown, Sir William Brown of Scottish Television. I would say thank you to um, Alec Mayer at Grampian Television, the chief executive at Grampian Television, a wonderful man who spotted my potential. Uh, thank you to Mike Henfield, the Managing Director of Red Rose Radio, who appointed Scotty McClue 28 years ago in June. Uh, the wonderful, the late, great John Myers, who was the Program Controller at Red Rose Radio, who was very encouraging about Scotty McClue. And he and I actually, um, you know, formed the idea as well of uh, of the phone-in. He was a great one for phone-ins. He loved the idea of a phone-in. John was a music presenter and a manager, but uh, he loved phone-ins. And they'd had a wonderful person down at Red Rose and were, you know, really, I think, finding it hard to, to find a replacement. And with Scott McClure, and then when I came up to Scott FM, a big thank you to Jason Bryant, to Tom Hunter, all that sort of thing. So a lot of very wonderful people have uh, have helped me over the piece, you know. Uh, so there we go. And thanks to um, the managing directors at uh, Radio Forth, at Radio Clyde, um, the managing director of Bauer Radio, wonderful. She gave me uh, some great breaks as well, and we networked the program. So, can you name three racing drivers who are called after Scottish towns? Johnny Dumfries, Stirling Moss, and Ayrton Centre. 
Very good, Gordon. I liked that one. Craig Cameron, thank you, John Marshall. Speaking of donkeys, there's a new up-and-coming band known as the Two Donkeys. One to look out for. I shall do that, John Marshall. Fantastic. Margaret Blair. Margaret Gibb, hello, asking for Bill Middleton. Thanks, Scotty. No bother, Margaret. You should come on and tell us how you are. Have you got a Skype? Scotty, Dr. McClure, and we'll get some Skypes on. So there we are. Declaration of our broth. Uh, Kareem Sakaraya. Outstanding McClure equals ratings. Well, last week were 15,000 joined us. Now, we've just started it last week. So there you are. So I think this is program... Is it 10? Have I put program 10 up there? Tony Lloyd, Dinky Doo, Chris Marshall, Lewis Hamilton, Eddie Irvin, uh, Moscow, the bin men are here. Rod, woo! The bin men are here. Fantastic. A celebration. The bin men are here. Um, Glenis, Marie Evans, Scotty, children are being subjected to home corona haircuts. Is that why you have your cap on? No. The wonderful Lynn Donnelly gave me a beautiful haircut uh, a few weeks ago, so I'm absolutely fine. You can see the back. Can you get a wee swatch there? I don't want to show you the lot, obviously, but it's, it's wonderful. Because there's a bit of a space between here when the hair starts. Lena Murdoch is a Kirkwood thoroughbred like myself. John Marshall, fantastic. Uh, Scotty, would you take on Lenny Murdoch? Well, I've just told him. I've just sent a warning. So there we go. Wonderful stuff. Alex Robertson, dinky do. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Alex Robertson. One of our finest Scottish actors. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you are finding things to be doing. Uh, COVID-19 is a virus. Penicillin doesn't work in viruses. Kevin Stewart, you're quite right. That wasn't what I was going to say. I was going to say how things, I know I get uh, carried away, so many interesting things happen in this show, and that was never enough. Um, what I was going to say to you about penicillin, although the great Sir Alexander Fleming found that, um, if you imagine when he went away on holiday and the bacteria grew in the Petri dish, see what I just did there, in the lab, see what I just did there, right? Um, if a cleaner had gone into the lab and then when he came back said, oh, Mr. Fleming, lovely to see you back. Uh, I've cleaned all your lab up and there was a wee bit of muck doing in one of your wee dishes and I've given that a good rinse suit. We might never have had penicillin. It's just a thought, isn't it? And there was another story that went about and it was a wee boy who rescued another boy that fell in the river. No, a, fa a farmer rescued a boy that fell in the river who was on holiday. And that night, the farmer got a visit and the guy said, my name is Randolph Churchill. Uh, thank you for rescuing my son. And the father said, no, no, I, I, I have a son as well. And he said, well, I would like to give you uh, something so that you can help to educate your son. Something like that, right? Anyway, story is, son grew up to be Sir Alexander Fleming. And Winston Churchill had pneumonia and got cured by penicillin. Is that possible? So there we are. I don't know. Interesting story, that one. Antibiotics are a wonder drug, says Paul Mack. Gordon Stilling has joined us. Gordon, what are you doing up? It's the middle of the night for you. I will do. Thank you so much, says Elizabeth White. Uh, there's antiviral medicines about which slow down the viral diseases like HIV. However, there's no antiviral treatment yet for COVID-19 new disease. Is it a new disease or is it an old disease in new clothing? Another thought. This is just McClure talking. 
Hey, hey, stay safe, says Heather McNeely. Stephen Mulgrew, dinky do. John Miles was a legend, says Rod Key. He was Rod, yes, he was a remarkable character. And I met John when he was 25. And um, I can remember he was he was wanting to find out about a lot of things. And I said, well, I can tell you that. So he said, well, come and have a cup of tea with me and tell me and all that sort of stuff. And we put together John's first CV. I remember that. And uh, wow, he did a lot with it. I think with the NHS have been given as PPE as a disgrace compared to any other country. They should be getting the best of gear and as much as they need. It goes for all frontline workers. Stay safe, people. Yeah, home carers, there, there should be a batches and batches and batches of these polythene things. If you wanted a roll of black bags or a roll of bin liners, they're all there. Uh, so they should be able to do the aprons, the gloves, the lot. Jeff Bernstein's watching Dinky Doo. Jeff, Brett Tidswell, Australia here as well. Brett, just for you, I am going to honour your presence. Oh! So there we are. Dinky Doo, Brett, Dinky Doo, Australia, fair dinkum. I've got my jackaroo on just for you. That's what it's all about, I say. Hey, welcome, Australia. Australia's watching Scotty McClure, guys. JP Martin, how's you, Scotty, from a wee place called Gart Kosh? Do you know it? Gart Kosh? The old steel mills just outside the Coat Brig, JP Martin. Am I correct? And not far from... What's the hospital called out there? There's an old Victorian hospital, probably an isolation hospital right out there. You've got the Bishop's Palace. You've got all that. So, yes, I know Gart Kosh, Gart Kosh Steel Mill as well. Knocked down now, isn't it? Big shout out to Newton House Care Home in Newton Mills. Dinky Doo says Jackie McCauley Brody. Jackie McCauley Brody, delighted so to do. I'm going to take off my Australian hat now, my jackaroo. I'll just say hi to everyone in Oz. There we go. Fair dinkum and dinky do. Oh, the, the hogs of Fife hat. Wonderful, lovely hat. Becky Phillips and Leighton, my family were from Butte town in Cardiff. My great uncle was a fishmonger and had a barrow out of Cardiff docks. Tiger Bay. Yes, heard of it. He let people have fish on the slate to payday. If they never had enough to buy there and then from the 1930s onwards. I don't know if you ever saw me post a picture of my great-grandfather with a gun over his shoulder and holding a duck. And he was born in the 1840s. He had about 13 children and uh, stayed in the West Loch Tarbert. And uh, what he would do was um, go shooting for the pot or go fishing, he was a fisherman, and he would leave fish, rabbits, anything like that on the doorsteps as he walked home in the middle of the night. So there we are, particularly for the widows. So there you go. What about that? People with big families. Scott McClure, I'll say have a good day, dinky you do. I will still have tomorrow at 10 a.m. Gartloch Hospital. That's it. That's it, John Marshall, Gartloch. Catherine Ann McLennan is watching. Catherine Ann, lovely to have you with us. Kamrahau Hachimachi. Uh, there we are, Gartloch Hospital, Victorian. J.P. Martin, you are correct. Stony X Hospital was near Gartkosh. Cheerio, Scotty. Murray O'Donnell, take great care of yourself. Dinky do, you top man. Lovely man. So there we are. How are we doing for time? Oh, my goodness. We're out of time. We're nearly into injury time. I'll have to sing you the goodbye song. Guys, what a fabulous program today. Please take great care of yourselves. Stay home. Stay in. Stay safe. Follow the instructions. Stay fabulous. And stay you. I'll see you all tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp. Now, there's no excuse for being bored because Scotty McClure's YouTube channel, where this will be being uploaded to, 
has got 700 videos for you to laugh along to. All right? What people are doing now, instead of television and radio, they're putting on the YouTube and just letting it play. Loving the morning show, Scotty says, Paul Mac, Kevin Stewart says, bye, bye everybody, the song. Goodbye everybody, goodbye. Take care everybody as you go. Goodbye everybody, of vitar zain, au revoir, and cheerio. ta -da, my loves, get sharing with us, spend your whole day sharing Scotty McClue's show. See ya, ta -da, loves. oh.